Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to an episode of Spitting Venom, aka the Venom Vlog, and thank you for making it through that whole video where I read all your comments. Hopefully you did. Thank you all for watching it. And uh, like I said, I try not to make one hour long videos. I try to just keep them reserved just for around when trailers come out. So that way we can do the breakdown, which is usually around 45 minutes to an hour. And then when I read your comments. Um, so, you know, hopefully we only have to do that one more time. And then after that, we can keep it to like 30 minutes or less videos. Uh, but today we have just a little bit of news. I'm not going to talk about this full article because like I said, I just got done filming a one hour video, but it took me like two hours to film it because I had a lot of technical problems, which was really bugging me. Uh, so we're going to just try to get through this really quickly, and I'm just going to let the link say everything. So there was an article of uh, Tom Hardy. He was interviewed for Esquire magazine, and this was a really interesting interview, actually, because things kind of go off script. They had this whole thing planned. Tom Hardy was going back to his hometown, um, and uh, he was basically going to take a motorcycle ride and give a tour to the person interviewing him. And they were going to just take this little drive around this small town that he's from uh, where his parents live and he owns like a little house there that he like goes to every now and again but he says there's a lot of you know, older people that live there so anytime he comes around there's like making noise and they complain about him making noise and so he's kind of like hey screw off you know but then he kind of backtracks a little bit and he's like all right yeah fine all right i'm whatever so um it's pretty interesting he's a very private guy and i know we talked about that with michelle williams and it's really neat to see them open up especially around the time for this movie uh, and so I find that very interesting. Michelle Williams shared a little bit more about her personal life when she did that interview recently. And then now we have Tom Hardy doing the same thing. And Eric Sullivan, who was the person who did this interview, I uh, thought wrote a really great article. It was really interesting. And he really got, you know, he really didn't pull any punches when it came to describing how Tom Hardy acted, you know, and Tom Hardy was okay with that happening too. He was like, you know what? You know, I kind of have an image. Some people think I'm kind of a bad boy. I do this and that. He goes, but I've been down this road before I, or I've done like bad things in my past or things that are questionable just because I was younger and things I'm not, maybe not proud of. He goes, so nowadays I try to be better than that. And I'm constantly fighting different things and fighting personal demons and, you know, trying to be better. And it's really neat. I mean, I, it's it very human article I found this to be. And also, the, of course, there's some movie information in there. There's stuff about Sony and how like, you know, they would like, to, you know, he's like, I look, if the movie does great, that's awesome. But this shared universe, this thing that they're building, that's not really on me. My job is to come in and do what's required of me, do, you know, do the role justice, try to deliver a great character in Eddie Brock and Venom and just kind of do my own thing. That's kind of my role. And he goes, if it goes on and it goes bigger than that, he goes, then I'll, you know, maybe I'll get involved with that and be more hands on or maybe I won't, you know, whatever. He's like, that's just, that's on Sony. It has nothing to do with me right now. And he goes, right now, I'm just trying to keep my head down and focus on the work I've done on this movie and the work I'm going to be doing on other projects coming up and trying to stay in that headspace. So it's, it's really neat and to kind of get a sense of how he, you know, thinks in a way. Um, but the big thing this article does is, uh, and this is something I've actually it happened to me before, and I'll, I'll tell you about it in a minute. But like in this article, he talks about that they were getting ready for a drive or they were driving down the street and they saw this old woman walking her dog, I think, and she fell over and hit her face on the pavement. And she was like an older woman. And so Tom Hardy pulled over and they went over and they checked on her. And then he said, hey, I know this woman. I know who she is. And she's like, I was friends with her son when I was a kid. And so he's like, hey, it's me. It's Tommy. I'm, I'm you know, just keep talking to me. Stay conscious. Stay awake. And, uh, you know, someone called an ambulance. They came. He, you know, saw her into it. Uh, her, her son showed up. You know, uh, Tom Hardy's friend from childhood showed up. And they their names were changed for the safety of the article, you know, to keep them, you know, their identities hidden. Um out of respect, I'm sure. But uh, Tom Hardy was like, you know, like, hey, you know, calm down, like talking to the, the guy. He's like, hey, it's, you know, mom's, the fact that she's at this state at this point and she's awake still in the ambulance and they haven't sped off with her, that's a good sign. You know, it means they're working on her right now. She's probably responsive. Like, just be patient. Like, you know, I'll, here, here's some money, you know, go to the hospital, you know, grab whatever you need to get, any supplies, anything you want to do. You're probably going to be at the hospital for a couple of days. I'll come meet you there later. And then him and the interviewer went off and kind of like, you know, had like a coffee or something. And he was like, kind of needed to decompress. And he said the reason he didn't want to go right there with uh, his friend was because he felt like it would pull his friend's attention away from his mom even a little. And he was like, you know, I don't want to be there for, I don't want to be that kind of distraction. I'm Tom Hardy. I could get, you know, recognized at the hospital or something like that. He's like, I don't want that kind of distraction. My friend needs to go be with his mom first and foremost, and then we'll go catch up with them later. And so he talks about this in the interview and, or this all happens like in the middle of this interview and in, in middle of this day that they had planned uh, where this person was going to like just follow him around and get information and see his life and what he does on his off time and learn a little bit about him and, 
they ended up learning that he's like a really solid dude and who will stop everything to help someone and isn't going to like, you know, just finish the interview and ignore that someone needs help, uh, you know, and I thought that was really great. Um, I was actually in Orlando and I was on my way to a, a production uh, job. I was a production assistant. I think at this point I might have been a, yeah, I think I was a camera utility uh, just for a, like a side job. It was like a one day job and it was for a company I barely worked for like often because I was a freelancer. So every once in a while I would get a call from this company and I really didn't really like working with them too much. But I got this call and I was like, yeah, I'll take the job. And then, uh, cause I had like a day off from my other job. So I was driving to the job and it was like eight in the morning and this woman was crossing the street and she was an older woman and she fell and cracked her face on the corner of a sidewalk. And she was probably like 60, 70 years old. So I stopped my car immediately in the middle of this five, like four lane, you know, it, like just straight away and there was like four lanes on each side and I stopped my car and pulled over cars were honking at me whatever I pulled over and I got out and I was helping the lady and then so after I helped her we made sure an ambulance came you know her lip was busted she was bleeding a lot um, I was trying to keep her elevated and talking to me and just trying to keep her awake we put towels and paper towels on her lips uh, luckily I had some in the car and we were talking to her and then I, I like people were calling me like hey where are you you're late you know this was like maybe half an hour later and I was just wanting to make sure she was okay she had no one around no family I think two other uh, like pedestrian or people were like staying with me one got on the bus though and left when they thought she was going to be okay but the other person stayed with me and we stayed with this woman and I ended up getting fired from that job they were like you know what don't come in today I'm like Dude, I'm like, I'm like, what do you want me to do? Take a picture of this woman? She's bleeding in front of me. Like, that would be really inconsiderate to take a picture and say, here, here's why I'm late. Uh, but no, they just, they didn't take my word for it. They were just like, no, you're, you're fired, you know, whatever. And I'm like, well, I don't like working with you anyway, so it's fine. But um, it's, it's just, it's, you know, I don't know. I think it's neat that he did this. Like, I, and it makes for an interesting article. And, it, and again, it's an article that's about him as a care as a person and what kind of his character and how he acts. So that's how the article became structured, I'm sure, after this event. Uh, and so they talk about how they went back to the you know the hospital later, and you know they went to the met at the bike shed, and there was all these you know, all these other stops that they made and uh, glimpses that this person got into Tom Hardy's life. But I just found it really interesting, and I thought it was really cool, and I wanted to bring it to you guys in case you didn't see it. I did retweet it, and I wasn't going to make a video on it, but I just figured you know what I do want to say something about this because. Um, I did promise I would cover news articles that come out about anything that's movie related. So there is some movie news in here, but that's, I already brushed on it what it was. It was basically Tom Hardy talking briefly about playing the character and how he kind of did like a Woody Allen thing, but he didn't want like the Sony to know that because he thought they would say no before he even got a chance to try it. So he kind of did a lot of things subtly uh, with the character that he thought he might get backlash for. Uh, so it shows that his kind of acting process, how he looks at things, how he looks at the character. Um, he talked about filming the movie where he plays Al Capone with uh, Josh Trank, who directed Fantastic Four and Chronicle, and they filmed that in New Orleans. So he talked about being a part of that. And uh, it was just, I don't know, it's a really neat article. So I just wanted to bring it to your attention. If you haven't read it yet, definitely check it out the link below. But I saw a lot of people trying to pull information out of here and make whole videos on that type of information and to me i'd rather talk more about the type of guy he is because if you want to go read those you know watch those videos you can uh or if you just want to read the article and see for yourself the movie information you can do that too but like i said i kind of brushed on most of it i didn't find it as interesting or as important as to what the structure of this article was which was kind of Tom Hardy, like, you know, what his mental state is, what kind of person he is, what kind of person he's trying to be, and his, the act of goodness that he does in this instance. So you guys let me know what you think of that. Read the article down below. It's very, very interesting. Like I said, numerous times, I'd probably use that word ad, to ad nauseum, uh, but that's the only word I could think of to describe it because it's it, it very human is this article. And I think the, the, the author of this is uh, did a very good job. Mr. Sullivan did a great job. So big shout out to you. So I will put a link down below to the article. Check it out. And then also I'll put a link down below to this other article where, because uh, I'm not going to make a whole video on it, where Tom Hardy is riding, speaking of motorcycles, because that's what they're riding around in. But in the movie, he's riding a Ducati Scrambler. I think one or two of you might have asked me before, a while back, what kind of motorcycle he was driving. And I, could, I didn't know right off the top of my head. And I said I would do some research and I forgot all about it. Well, luckily this article, even though they spell Eddie Brock's name wrong, they actually Actually spell Eddie wrong and they forget the E two times uh, they put Eddie E-D-D-I uh, but that's okay otherwise it's a pretty good article and they talk about the motorcycles that um, Tom Hardy rides in the Venom movie so if you're interested in that I'll put a link down below and let me know your thoughts on that as well if you read that article thanks so much for watching my show as always like share subscribe all that fun stuff and I'll see you in the future peace